Are you thinking about moving to Florida, but you're not really sure if you'll like it, or maybe you have questions about what it's like to live here? Well, make sure you stick around because that's what I'm talking about today. What's up everybody, it's April Laura, your Florida Realtor right here and I am talking about what it's like to live in Florida, especially South Florida. And if this is your first time to my channel and you want to know everything there is about working, eating, sleeping, playing, and living in Florida, then make sure you tap that subscribe button and ring the little bell so you're notified every time I do a new video because it's pretty much all I talk about. My team and I absolutely love helping people relocate to South Florida and educating them on where to live and what it's like to live here. We get calls, text messages, and emails every single day and we absolutely love it. We can't help you unless you give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, somehow get in touch with us because we've got your back when you're moving to Florida. Now let's go talk about what it's like to live here. Okay, so the first question I get all the time is where should I live? And this is a great question and obviously a very important question if you're moving to a new place. So it really depends on who you are, what type of lifestyle you have, and you know, where do you need to be close to? So the majority of the people that I do help moving here are families, but there are also some recently retired people that are active adults. There are also younger generation, which there are you know young professionals and want to be kind of close to things that are happening and lots of activities to do. First off, if you are a family, we have so many great neighborhoods and most people know about Boca Raton because Boca Raton has most of the A-rated schools, but there are a lot of areas in Boca Raton. There's all the way out west, which a lot of people do end up in because there are just so many options there and you get a little bit more for your money if you're going to be living in Boca Raton as a family. And I'm talking about the areas west of 441. You basically have all the extracurriculars, you have great homes, whether they're on a lake, lots of amenities, of course, all the extracurriculars and all of the great parks and, and all the great schools that are there. Along with that, there's a lot of shopping, dining, and lots of things to do as far as being out west. You don't have to worry about going all the way east to the downtown areas and where the more popular places are to go out to dinner or enjoy a night out. So in that regard, West Boca really does offer a lot and that's why people end up buying there. Now, there are lots of other areas as well, but they're just gonna be different types of neighborhoods and different types of homes. In West Boca, for the most part, you're gonna find the most amount of gated communities. And then as you go towards the middle and the east, there's gonna be a variety of different homes, older homes that have been renovated, lots of great neighborhoods that are very mature and well-established and very safe, but they're not gated. So I have noticed that a lot of people that are coming to South Florida, they want a gated community with a family because you know one of the spouses is going off to work or both and they wanna feel comfortable and safe when they come home or when they leave and leaving their family at home to make sure that you know nothing major is going to happen for the most part, which is understandable. Ensure that you are going to be safer. Well, not necessarily. There are lots of great neighborhoods, some are gated, some are not. You'd have to come here and see. To be honest with you, you would probably have to live here and get the feel for the communities before you felt maybe that that was a difference. Now, besides Boca Raton, there are other great areas. You can go south into Broward County. There's Parkland, Coral Springs, Coconut Creek, and then you can go north, whether it's West Boynton. West Boynton has the whole canyons area. I just did a video on that, and that's a great area for families. And then, of course, you can go into Wellington, which is a little further west, but a great, great area to raise your children and just have a family-friendly community with, again, all of the essentials, amenities for the kids, parks and recreation, great schools, gated, non-gated choices, and just a great community to be involved in. And then from there, you can actually go north to Royal Palm, which is an older community, but very nice, or out west to Westlake. And Westlake gives you some new construction options at a pretty decent price compared to other options in the county. So you have Westlake, you have Arden, and then from there, you're gonna go north to 
North Palm Beach and also Palm Beach Gardens and Jupiter. Now Palm Beach Gardens and Jupiter also great areas for raising your children, good schools. These are at the higher price points. Jupiter, Palm Beach Gardens, and I would say Boca are like more expensive than Wellington and that West Boynton Beach area. There's lots of choices for families, and if you haven't heard of some of these areas and maybe you were just thinking about one of them, then let's jump on a call or have a Zoom meeting so that I can kind of quickly go over it, show you the maps, and give you some great options and maybe even send you some listings. Now, if you're single or you are just like a young professional or like a young couple, maybe buying your first place here, then you might wanna be further east but then again it really depends I've helped a lot of young couples that you know they don't want to be in the middle of downtown or close to all the action they want to be just a little bit removed but also easy access so it really just depends a lot of people I've noticed are coming here for the outdoorsy way of life so they want to be close to parks nature the water water sports you know be able to be outside as much as possible during the year and that's one of the great things that we have as far as living in South Florida we get to enjoy this amazing amazing environment that we have for the most part throughout the year now another category of people that I help a lot is recently retired or retirees that have decided they want to retire in Florida we're moving in lock stock and barrel again most of the time it is because of that active lifestyle and let me tell you we have some incredible 55 plus active adult communities here in South Florida I mean they're kind of sprinkled throughout all counties and really provide a wide array of amenities I mean everything you could possibly think of and of course it depends on your price point but you know if you have a decent price point you can get like into the Valencia's the newer Valencia's which have absolutely everything to offer as far as amenities I'm talking pickleball bocce ball restaurants cafe full liquor license of course a beautiful resort style pool lap pools I mean everything and anything gorgeous card rooms I mean everything you could possibly think of in fact I just did a new video on Valencia Grand and I'll link that right up here so you can maybe check that out, out if you're interested. But even if you're in different price points, actually there's one that not a lot of people know about, I did a video on this too, which is Delray Trails, and that's at a lower price point, not as many options that you're gonna be able to pick for you know your home, but it's a great location and also is around so many other things. So do you have to have all the amenities included in where you're living? Maybe, maybe not, it really depends. Maybe you just wanna be in a specific location and then be able to have access to everything that the area has to offer, which is a lot. So it really just depends on who you are, exactly what you're looking for. I have a lot of people that, hey, they wanna travel at this point in their lives and they want something that's just turnkey, they can lock it up and go. They want a beautiful amenity and resort style pool area that they don't have to take care of and they're happy with a monthly fee, but they don't have to worry about dealing with it if anything happens while they're gone on one of these trips and you know they don't want that type of headache. I'm certain that we can help you at any stage in your life and wherever it is that you're looking and most likely be able to guide you better if we jump on a call or do a Zoom. Okay, so of course we have to talk about the weather which is a big question all the time on a few different levels. So uh, we just came off of a beautiful winter. Every winter we just have the most amazing, gorgeous weather. I mean, I wake up in the winter times and I just absolutely love it. And all I wanna do is be outside. So if I have time off on the weekends, I'm definitely spending my entire day outside because it's just so incredible being active, you know, running my errands, enjoying friends and places and maybe getting out on the water. I just love it and our weather is usually between like low 60s, mid 60s to mid 70s. It's And it's blue skies, white clouds, sunny but so comfortable. It's just beautiful. And that's really the draw and that's why you hear people that are quote unquote snowbirds or people that have second homes here and they come down in the winter, it is precisely because of the winter weather here. That is what makes South Florida most attractive because of our environment and because of the weather and being able to have all that time outside pretty much year round. Outside enjoyment 
lessons in the summer months and we are in them. It just started probably three weeks ago. Actually, at the beginning of May, it was surprisingly beautiful. It was cooler than I expected. And then of course, all of a sudden, we started having terrible crashing thunderstorms in the afternoon time, which is very normal for summer. They can be pretty violent as far as they roll in very dark clouds, lots of rain lots of thunder and lightning so it can be very off-putting if you're not used to it i'm used to it it's just part of life in the summertime along with the humidity along with the heat it feels like you're speaking through a wet cloth sometimes because it is so humid at times so lately it's just been really really hot Lunch. And what we do in the summer times is we stay inside as much as possible. We go from one air conditioned area to another air conditioned area with, you know, a car, a air conditioned car in between. Now you have to be really careful getting into your cars when it's summertime because the steering wheel, the seats, everything will be hot. It'll be like a sauna. So you have to roll down the windows, let all that heat out and then crank up the AC and get to where you're going so you can be in another air conditioned space unless you're like in the pool or on the water. So of course, if you're on the water, you have a beautiful breeze, the water feels great, but you gotta be careful with the sun and make sure that you are putting on that SPF every single day. And actually we're really supposed to be putting it on multiple times a day, but you know, do what you can, wear a hat, protect yourself from that sun because it can be really really dangerous and very very hot so that is an issue but you know most people travel during the summer or they go they plan things with the kids when they're out of school because it's so hot that's the best time to get out of South Florida that's also the time of South Florida where real estate kind of it gets slow because most people are trying to spend time with their families go on vacation get out of the heat and they're really not looking to buy a house here unless they have to. So unless they are relocating and it's in between schools and they need to get here before the new school season starts. Sometimes it's a good time to buy because people know that it's slower and they might negotiate, you know, be able to be more flexible on the negotiations. And sometimes it's not because there's not that many options. So that's something to consider when you are shopping. Okay, and of course we have to talk about hurricanes because that's part of the weather and that's that I get asked all the time. Thank goodness we get warning, we're able to prepare. We make sure that our homes have everything needed to be safe. If they're not, then you have to go somewhere and be safe depending on the category level of hurricane that's coming. There's lots of preparations to make sure that you are ready for, you kind of do that ahead of time. And then when the time comes that there might be a huge storm, a hurricane, then you have to watch the news, watch the weather reports, the hurricane center, they are the experts, they let us know you know, kind of which way they think it's going to go. They're never 100% right because it's mother nature and mother nature does what she wants. Today's weather report is brought to you by. And sometimes these storms at the last minute will change direction or go further north or go further south, east, west, what have you, diagonal, and they will be surprised. So no matter if it's hitting one city, if you're north or south of that city or east or west, you have to assume that it could hit you as well. I mean, we just had that happen about a year ago or less actually with Hurricane Ian. It was supposed to hit Tampa, it went south, and it really did some serious devastation. It was a pretty high intensity storm and it was a very large storm. Not every hurricane is like that. They're all different. Some of them are smaller, some of them are wetter, some of them are windier. So it really depends. No two hurricanes are alike and you just have to kind of prepare for the worst and hope for the best. As we're on the topic of hurricanes, I don't always get asked this question about home insurance, but I'm gonna talk about it because it's really important right now because home insurance has been changing. Honestly, I feel like it's been changing like for the last four years, but especially in the last two, one and a half to two years, it's really gone berserk as far as insurance rates and getting home insurance. For the last several years, insurance has been changing pretty rapidly. We have a lot of like barrel tile, they're like concrete roofs, whether they're flat or barrel tile, or whatever, what have you. And those roofs easily last for 30 to 40 years and sometimes even 50 years, depending on the type of material that they're made out of. A few years ago, they were only insuring them up to 25 years old. Not that they weren't insuring them, they were insuring them, but you wouldn't get 100% of the credits because there's a lot of 
of components to getting all of the credits for storm protection, which is one of our biggest things here in Florida, along with you know water damage and all other types of things. But for your home insurance, you wanna make sure your home is covered with the most credits for storm protection. A roof is a big item on that list. Years ago, it was up to 25 years, but if you had a shingle tile roof, it was like 10 years. Well, now that has recently changed. It is now 15 years. They want you to have a 15 year old roof or younger in order to get 100% of that credit for that roof. And, and also you have to make sure that it's, you know, to regulation as far as how it's tied down and all those good things. Most of the roofs these days are. That's something when you are buying, you really have to make sure that you know the ins and outs of home insurance. I'm most definitely making sure that my buyers are speaking to home insurance companies for quotes, several different quotes, while we're in the inspection period. Because once your inspection period is over, you can't back out of that contract unless your, you know, your financing doesn't go through or what have you. But if the home insurance quotes are gonna be too high and they're really gonna raise your monthly numbers, then that's something you need to take care of early on in the contract to make sure that you can afford this house. I mean, in some areas, the price of home insurance is really skyrocketing. I would say like in the East Boca area, there's some areas that's going up 229%, which means a $950 policy would go to $3,128. That's an enormous jump. And it's part of the monthly numbers that you really need to know. So make sure you're getting those quotes and make sure that you are also including flood insurance. Whether you're in a flood area or not, your home insurance agent will be able to give you accurate quotes with whether or not you're in a flood zone or not you should get quotes with and without that flood insurance just recently this year we had terrible unexpected unprecedented flood in fort lauderdale and in areas that were not flood zones the rain came down so heavy and so quickly that it flooded out i'm sure you've seen it on the news but it you know it was just something that we didn't expect and quite frankly frankly that's happening everywhere i was just in utah it happened there i'm other states you know things are things are happening everywhere in the world and in the united states so you just have to be insured and make sure that you're covering your dwelling as best as possible. Okay, another question I get a lot is on wildlife. Specifically, I would say I get questions about alligators and I get a questions about mosquitoes, which we have both of those. And we have a lot of them, quite frankly. So good questions. Now, you know, I used to say, don't worry about the alligators. You never see alligators. Cause honestly, I never see alligators. I also don't go to where alligators live. And if I'm ever around a body of water, especially any kind of fresh water, lakes, whether they're man-made or they've been there, you know, cause God made them. Well, guess what? There could be an alligator. So if you have small children, if you have small pets, any kind of pets, if you are, you know, maybe living with an elderly person, be careful around water, basically. I do feel like there are not only a lot of alligators in Florida, there are, but they're also getting to a point where they're so large and so big and they're really going after bigger targets. I've seen in the last couple of years, a lot of reports throughout the state, right? So it happens kind of everywhere where there've been alligator attacks, alligators that have killed people, dogs, small animals. I mean, they're wildlife, so you're very unpredictable. You don't know what to expect. I know that I have seen them, like when I go to national parks and when I go to see the springs and things like that, you'll see them on the banks. And I don't even like to see that. I don't, I can't stand alligators. They terrify me. So I definitely stay away from them and take precautions. So if you're on a lake, I would definitely have a fence around it where nothing can get in or out very easily. Take the precautions, make sure that you are aware and you're not hanging out at the banks without being cautious about what could be coming out of that water. Mosquitoes, so I have people that want to move here, but they're like, April, I hate mosquitoes. Mosquitoes attack me all the time. I don't know what to tell you, except, you know, we definitely have ways to like try and control the mosquitoes. They're definitely worse in some areas. 
further inland, if you're near, you know, kind of still bodies of water. Developments aerate the water. It doesn't allow, I think, the mosquito eggs to gestate or whatever, but I know that that helps with controlling some of the mosquito situation. There's also all types of systems that you can install in your backyards, different types, depending on what you're looking for and what your level of comfort is as far as, you know, taking care of those things. And other than that, screens are good. If you, you know, put in some kind of screen enclosure, make sure you have your screens on your windows, obviously, if you're, you know, leaving your windows open, especially in the winter time, because it's so beautiful, but it's, part of life and we have all types of different ways of handling that from obviously mosquito repellent to citronella candles to screens to zappers and all kinds of things. For the most part when I start getting really badly bit by mosquitoes it's usually like around dusk and they start to come out and if it gets too bad then you just go inside and maybe try again later but summer months are worse usually it's not so bad in the winter if it's something you cannot deal with then you might want to reconsider because we definitely have mosquitoes and they're not going anywhere but in order to find that perfect place that you may be thinking of or wanting to go see make sure you give us a call send us a text shoot us an email somehow get in touch with us because we've got your back when you're moving to florida and until next video i'll catch you later And if this is your first time, what type of lifestyle you, you are, West Boca, I'm sorry, Unsup wait, we started to have to, you know, come, uh, was a pretty hard, uh, as we're on the, as we're on the, uh, and it's a part of unprecedented, unprecedented, um, small child, um, you know, bleh, not small children. It doesn't allow like the mosquito eggs to um, 